Tomorrow's Brain. This is a one school for lecture by Andrew Thomas uh, for Esfal University College that I want you to watch by the 20th of November, uh, which is on Tuesday when we have our next lesson. So you are your brain and you are what goes on behind your brain. Um, you are also your hands and feet, but you're definitely your brain. And as um, teachers, we're in the business of changing brains, of developing brains, of doing something to people's brains because we're in the knowledge business and knowledge actually happens in our brain. Whatever else happens in our brain, whether you feel pain in your toe and in your brain, you definitely know things in your head, in your brain. Probably amongst other things. I rather think my fingers know a great deal when I'm playing the piano or when I'm typing on a keyboard. But that's another matter. So brains change, and I want to persuade you that um, that brains change physically and brains change change significantly for your future life and for the life of your society. And also, we can change our brains. We can do things, and what we what we do um, can change what we think tomorrow. But also, whether we like it or not, our brains develop, and they develop on the basis of our history. Um, so when we're asking the, the question of what kind of brains do we want to change, we're also asking the question of what histories do we want, what biographies, what we want our biography to look like, but also what we want our world's history to look like in the future. So what kind of brains do we want is a very close uh, question to what kind of history and what kind of society we want. But let's go back to the beginning and ask, um, and ask how do brains change and, 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 and what, is, what are we saying happens when we're saying that brains actually change. So most of you have heard about um, taxi drivers and their amazing brains. Um, taxi drivers need to know streets much better than you and I. I get lost just going from home sometimes if I get um, if I stop thinking too much about Wittgenstein or work or um, Game of Thrones. Um, whereas um, taxi drivers know every street in wherever they're working um, and they know it extremely well. They can tell you automatically and really quickly what's the fastest way to get somewhere um, and how, how long it takes to get there. Uh, which means they're better than us um, and it, specifically it means their brains are better than ours particularly at um, going through streets um, and um, and that's not just an exaggeration people have actually examined the brains of taxi drivers and it turns out their brains are actually bigger than ours as well specifically the bit where they stay where they store um, maps and the map bit of the brain has been changed, and it's not because they're born like that. It's not because of some genetic um, advantage they have. They have changed their brains, and that's what we do when we learn. We change our physical brains. So this um, matrix idea, um, whereby um, you can just change your brain by um, by doing some physical change, is not far from the truth. You actually do. Uh, obviously, we can't just we don't we don't um, teach people by um, going into their spinal cord, but we definitely do something to their spinal cord when we teach them. So it's not actually far from. It's not that much of a fantasy. Um, the question is. Um, the question is then, um, how is our brain structured? And there are two different geographies there. There's the physical geography, like I say, um, taxi drivers have, have particular areas of their brain is bigger. But then there's also the mental geography, which is to say that I can, um, which is there, I organize my brain in a particular way. And both of those, um, both of those are important things to know about as teachers. I looked at one of those geographies when I was uh, when I was spending some time in Heidelberg, telling everybody about this wonderful course. So this is uh, University of Heidelberg in Heidelberg in Germany, um, not far from where Luther first did his disputation um, and the uh, birth of the Reformation. I'm not interested in Luther at the moment. I'm interested in these lines. You may not see it very well, but they are diagonals. And this is exactly how our brain works. Point being, if you wanted to get people to park straight in here, then um, you're just going to have to change the way the lines look. Um, and uh, this is a square with diagonal lines. And when people park here, they park on their diagonal. I saw it this morning. And the fact is, we uh, we park our thoughts in our brain in ways in which we've um, prepared. Um, ways that we prepare the brain um, for the thoughts and you can change the way you prepare your brain for thoughts and when you change the, that then you change the way the thoughts work our brain can be transformed so just like you can actually be a hellraiser or, an, uh, or a rebel when it comes to um, the way you use your um, your car um, 
um, or the way you um, act in, in in public, you can also be a hellraiser in the way you actually think. You can protect. You you can park in um, in inconvenient ways, but you can also think in inconvenient ways. You can give your brain a makeover, um, and maybe you're not. Uh, maybe you're actually happy with the way your brain works at the moment. But you have to remember that your brain actually works in conventional ways, and you might want to actually change those conventions. I'm not particularly happy with my eyebrows, so um, maybe I'd want to change those. But the same, I could actually have the same. Um, same attitude towards the way my brain works and that's essentially why we take trending um, why we take education is because we're not happy with the brain the way our brain works at the moment we want it to work in different ways and of course education is also required by somebody else so that also, that also assumes that they they're not happy with the way your brain works either they want you to have a degree so that you can do certain things that society uh, society wants people to do. That's not the education is not the only way we can change our brains. Of course, as we've already talked about, and taxi drivers change their brains and they do it, do that by driving and studying. Uh, but we can also take um, drugs and they will help us to see things and um, that other people can't see. Um, and in the case of addictive drugs, they uh, we we can choose away our freedom, which is our future uh, brain's possibility to take particular choices. Uh, we can experience trauma, and that um, will make change our personality in complete uh, in, in, in enormous ways or tiny ways we can get older experience mental sicknesses uh, we can willingly or unwillingly engage in various kinds of therapy uh, but we can also play Pokemon Go or heyday I can't be the only one that um, plays Tetris and after having played for a, for a couple hours because who can play for less than a couple hours um, start seeing blocks everywhere in their life and start seeing um, the windows as, as enormous great big blocks that are falling down from the sky so um, it's, also, it's both the case that we can intentionally change our brains, but also the things that we do change our brains whether we like it or not. One of the things we do is live in particular buildings, and this is a picture from a mosque that some of us visited this week. And, um, and, and mosques are, are structured in particular ways. Religious buildings do tend to be structured in particular ways. Um, and uh, they do so in order to help us think in particular ways. Famously, to remember stuff, to, to use your memory in an extremely good way, um, you should think about, uh, you should connect the things that you're thinking about with your home, with a, a building that, you've, that you're very familiar with. That's the way we remember things in a really good way. Um, and, but obviously that means that if you're in a home with a, with a great deal of um, very strange corners, um, then you're going to remember things differently. Oh, that means we do remember things differently, even though we use exactly the same technique and so architecture and um, and people that design habits or exercises or mental exercises they're all um, to do with um, changing the way we and uh, change our brain. Now we can choose whether to we go to those buildings or not, but we can't necessarily just go into whatever building we want and decide what kind of building that's going to be. We aren't in control of these processes. Um, so the question of um, what kind of thoughts do we want to have personally is also being asked about um, by architects and politicians and teachers and the, um, or whoever as um, in terms of what kind of um, thoughts do we want other people to have. So and, and, and that's and that's one of the questions at the centre of what should we do with our brain in, in Malibu. What kind of brain do I want for myself? Um, but also, what kind of brains do, um, do, do, do societies require us to have? What does education do? Um, and what do our other institutions, uh, whether they be legal or psychiatric or medical or, um, or, or just in terms of courses and educational um, or voluntary or involuntary, what do they do with our brain? And, and, and do we want that kind of, those kind of brains? So what kind of brains does society need? And I hope at least that that is a very uncomfortable question for you to ask.